Hi, I'm Umbreon Libris, and welcome back to Art School! In the first episode of this series, I created a Fakemon in order to show you the techniques involved in making a Pokemon sprite for Generation 1 games. It was a one-stage water-type otter Pokemon that I called Water. Then in the second episode, I took that pixel art and developed the design a little bit more to show the techniques involved in making official art following Ken Sugimori's watercolor style for Generations 1 and 2. Today we are closing the classic Pokémon cycle by creating a sprite in the style of Generation 2. And in true Johto fashion, we're doing this by introducing a baby form. Gen 2 pixel art is quite similar to the style of Generation 1, so you should recognize quite a few of the techniques that we looked at in Episode 1. We still have a canvas that is 56 pixels on each side, but because we're making a baby Pokémon, we do not want to use all of that space, so resolution remains one of the big challenges here. This time I did some sketches on paper, so I was a lot more objective about working out the design. Most of the baby Pokémon are just simplified versions of their original forms, with maybe one new design element, so that's the direction that we're going in as well. My concept here was that it would look like a baby otter, but I was also thinking of the image of a child that looks drenched and miserable in the rain. I thought of giving it galoshes, but that didn't look right. A snot bubble, though, now that will sell the wet and miserable aesthetic. It's starting to look a lot like an otter version of Cub Chew. I wanted to try giving it a hood, like from a raincoat, and it had looked quite cute when I sketched it on paper, but in the tiny resolution that we have to work with, I just couldn't get it to look right, so I decided to drop that too. With the lines all good to go, now we can move on to color. This is one of the big differences between Generations 1 and 2 sprites. Whereas in Generation 1 we had to work with black, white, and two shades of grey, now we can work with black, white, and two colors. That could be two shades of the same color, like on Espeon, or it could be one shade of two different colors, like on Umbreon. This gives us a lot more flexibility, but still not that much. The Game Boy Color supports 15-bit color, which is enough for about 32,000 possible colors, which sounds like a lot, and it both is and isn't. When you're coming up with colors for your sprite, if you have no intention of putting that sprite into an actual Game Boy Color game, then you don't have to worry about whether the colors are actually in the Game Boy Color palette. But if you do want or need to be strict about it, then you have to stick to these colors, and I recommend you look up 15-bit RGB. I'm using a bit of a shortcut and taking the palettes from some sprites that I think have good colors for what I want. I started with the Kingdra palette because it looked about right, but we'll play around with that some more later. The blue was feeling a bit too bright for something that is supposed to be mostly black, so I started over with black as the base color, and used the blue for the highlights and for the reversed outlines. When you're so restricted for colors, you end up having to get creative, and the effect that this has on the look of the sprites is actually one of my favorite things about the Gen 2 aesthetic. One of the best examples of this is the Beedrill sprite, which uses the red from Beedrill's eye as also the highlight color on the black parts of the body and as a lighter outline color. Or look at Tyranitar and how the blue of the belly is also used as the shadow color for the green parts of the body. If you're lucky, your Pokémon only has one body color like Piloswine, and so you get to do more interesting and layered shading. If you are not so lucky, you might end up with something like Hopip, which has very little shading and so looks very flat, because its two colors are not great for shading each other. But if you get really lucky, you could end up with something like Raiko, which manages to have areas of four different colors without any of them looking flat, because the purple works great both as a highlight color for the dark areas and as a shading color for the white areas. In any case, the blue and yellow aren't ideal for this creative combination of colors, but I did get to do a bit of that. The snot bubble is outlined in blue to make it look more transparent, but I also used a little corner of yellow to give it a bit of shading without just making it more blue. I did also use the blue for a bit of shading on the yellow areas and for creating some softer outlines on the face, especially on the cheek fluff and the mouth. After I played around with the colors some more, I was again feeling that the blue was too bright, so I went after some Pokémon with darker palettes. Those Turned out to be too dark, so ultimately I went with an in-between color that I made myself, 
I did not check that it's in the Game Boy Color palette. I also tried a version of the body that is shaded less like Murkrow and more like Sneasel, where the dark bluish color is the majority of the body. But again, that wasn't looking black enough in this context. The other big difference between sprites for Generations 1 and 2 is that in Pokémon Crystal, sprites were animated. It's a one-time animation, usually one or two seconds long, that plays when the Pokémon first enters battle. Sometimes it's just a few frames, like Wobbuffet, other times it's much more, like Scyther, but it usually includes a main action and a fidget, like Houndoom howling and then twitching its tail, or Magby blowing fire and then blinking. These animations also contribute to my love for the Gen 2 aesthetic. Sprite animations in later games often involved distorting the sprite itself, but in Generation 2 every frame was manually done and so the animations look super clean. I'm not an animator though, so I'm keeping mine simple. Our new friend will sniffle and then blink and twitch its tail. There we go, I think that looks good. And now that that's done, we can also quickly put together a shiny version. In keeping with the tradition of making water types purple or pink, we'll make this one both. So there we go, I don't have a name for this one besides baby water, so I'll have to hear some suggestions from you. If you use what you learned today to make some Gen 2 style sprites, I would love to see it. Next time, we will move on to the official art styles of the Advance and DS eras. Thank you for watching, and thank you, of course, to my patrons, especially luxury patron Ethan from Chicago. I'm Umbrian Libris, I'll see you in the next chapter. <laughs>